After being asked a multitude of times to react to the Netflix documentary Tiny Creatures, specifically episode two, I'm finally doing it for you guys. I did have to figure out a way around it because it is a Netflix series and you can't just show a whole Netflix episode on YouTube because you will get copyrighted. Even if I'm reacting to it, I'm not taking the risk. So we're gonna do things a little bit different. I went ahead and watched the episode and I've taken down some notes and we're gonna go over the summary of it and then I'm gonna give you my thoughts on this episode. So episode two is in New York. The narrator starts off by telling us that New York is home to more than 8 million inhabitants. And we're already off to a bad start when the camera pans in to introduce the golden hamster, which is living in what I found on Google to be the Lazy Bones three-story hamster cage, which is 16 inches by 10 inches, giving us a total of 160 square inches of floor space. Uh, and yes, it does have three levels, but essentially that does nothing for the hamster. The narrator proceeds to tell us that this pet lives a pampered life and that he's happy to trade his freedom for security. There's a chihuahua. He likes staring at the hamster. The owner leaves and this is when the hamster just pops out the top door. He makes a break for it and escapes down the entire cage and then falls down the two foot drop unscathed and he goes crazy exploring. He crawls up onto the couch and then he uh, finds some tissue in a purse and he proceeds to pouch it and then go all the way back, somehow magically climb this two foot table that's made out of wood and is smooth, uh, climb up his cage and then go back into his house and make himself a cozy nest. And then he goes to sleep because as the narrator actually says, hamsters sleep during the day. Next thing you know, a child busts through the door and literally claws him out of his nest while he's trying to sleep. Then she proceeds to put him in the hamster ball during the day. The hamster is knocking into tables and apparently purposely tormenting the dog by chasing it around in the ball. The hamster then proceeds to knock into the table, which then leads to a glass vase smashing on the ground, framing the dog, so the dog goes to doggy jail. The owner then proceeds to clean up the glass and then she walks out the front door and she leaves her front door open. Uh, so the hamster just happens to stroll on out the door to the elevator next to a man who still who does not notice this hamster. Doors open, hamster rolls in. Man still does not notice hamster. Uh, elevator doors open. The hamster rolls out onto a construction site. No one still does not see this hamster in a ball. He's literally rolling on the edge of a building. <laughs> The hamster runs into a pigeon, pigeon flies away. The hamster rolls still onto the construction scene with people literally walking by him and is unseen. He dramatically falls down a chute. This either had to be a stuffed animal or CGI because this hamster 100% would have been dead by now. And then the hamster's just rolling around New York. Still, nobody is noticing a hamster and a hamster ball. He's literally going across a crosswalk with people and they are doing nothing. They're like, oh, this happens every day. The hamster then rolls into an alley with a cat and the cat obviously wants to eat him and the cat smacks him, which then the ball finally pops open, which I'm shocked it didn't open sooner. The hamster then escapes down the sewer from the cat. He's tight rope walking across a pipe which he's in the sewer now. He goes into a random pipe. Next thing you know, it's raining and the sewer is filling up and now there's like 30 rats coming out of a pipe. So the hamster's running away. The narrator <laughs> proceeds to say he risks drowning in, when in reality, the hamster would actually just risk being killed by the rats who would 100% kill him before he even ended up drowning. Then luckily the hamster escapes into yet another pipe. 
and he almost just barely in the nick of time almost gets washed away. He sees a piece of debris floating by so he decides to climb on and just take a little raft boat ride across the sewer and then he's free from the sewer and you think it's all good but it's not. We meet a falcon who is built for speed and then the falcon laser beam spots this hamster. The hamster is unaware. He clearly oh, no. is just eating some dirt. He would have 100% died once again but somehow Drain Steam saves him from the falcon swooping down and the falcon takes off. The narrator proceeds to tell us the, the hamster notices a familiar sight when in reality a hamster can't even see six inches in front of their face so he would never be able to actually see his what looks like to be his hamster cage when in fact it's not. So the hamster sneaks into the pet shop. He almost gets smushed by a mouse trap. He's climbing super high. Uh, narrator says they're surprisingly good climbers when actually they're really terrible climbers because they have basically no tail unlike a mouse and a rat. The hamster's eating a mealworm living his best life. He still manages not to be seen when he's literally in plain sight. He is a Syrian hamster, so he is physically, you would see him. He gets packed into a box with insects, uh, and then he chews out of the box, and he literally jumps out of the vehicle, still not being seen. Now we're panning over Central Park, and the hamster is wandering around the park, wondering if this is a good home. And next thing you know, he's in a train station. And then apparently life goes on in New York City, which were then shown the hamster's cage replaced with a tiny rabbit cage stuffed with two rabbits. And we finish off with, as for the hamster, the journey has only just begun, which is false because he'd be dead. This episode actually had a lot of potential to educate people on hamsters and help them learn a little bit more about them. They did touch on a couple of things about hamsters, such as hamsters being solitary, uh, how they have cheek pouches and they can put stuff in there to keep it dry, as well as they talked about how they sleep during the day. But there's a lot more they could have included. They also did not give a good example of proper hamster care. Because they didn't show a good example of how to properly care for a hamster, instead they used your basic pet store cage, they didn't have any bedding in the enclosure, the wheels were way too small for the Syrian, if you noticed, the Syrian was pretty much half the size of the cage. They also had no accessories in there or anything else for the hamster to get any enrichment out of, which would explain actually why the hamster escaped the enclosure to begin with. Now, showing a bad example of hamster care to thousands, possibly millions of people watching really spreads more misinformation. When somebody who is uneducated on hamsters watches this episode and sees like the cage and everything, perhaps they're watching it with their family, they have kids, their kids all of a sudden get the idea that they want a hamster, which is totally normal for a child to see something on TV and then also like, hey, I want one of those. It then gives them that the idea that everything shown in the video is suitable and safe for the hamster. For example, the cage, um, as well as the hamster ball the girl puts the hamster in. Hamster balls are unsafe for, for a multitude of reasons. They are very uncomfortable to walk in if you notice the hamster running in it. He does not look comfortable. The hamster ball has very poor ventilation. The ventilation slits can get a toe or paw caught in there, which can very easily break them and hurt them. Um, they're just overall not a safe toy. They can also pop open as shown in the episode. So they are a not a safe product to use. Also showing a child run in just directly claw in there and pull the hamster out of its nest when they clearly just had stated that hamsters sleep during the day. So why would it make it okay for somebody to wake them up? And then she woke him up and then proceeds to just put him in the hamster ball and then she's nowhere else to be seen. So what was the point of that? I'm sure the hamster rather would have been sleeping than running in this hamster ball. It also gets me a little that they just went and showed that the family who owned the hamster just went and replaced 
the hamster with a new pet as if it's just a replaceable animal. And they proceed the, to replace the hamster with two rabbits in a cage that I would have rather seen the hamster live in. I'm also hoping that this doesn't give people the idea that hamsters could just like perfectly survive if they got out or that you can just set your hamster free. Please don't ever set your domesticated animal out into the wild. It causes a lot of issues with the ecosystem as well as that is a death sentence to your pet. If you no longer want your pet, please rehome them to either a responsible pet owner or a shelter who can find them a better home. Do not release your domesticated pet into the wild. In conclusion, I did think the episode was cute uh, and interesting, but they missed out on a huge opportunity to actually properly educate about hamsters and honestly I would have been happy if they would have just went with a suitable enclosure and had some like a good hamster cage set up going and avoided using the hamster ball. They could have made the episode still without a lot of the factors in there. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It was very difficult for me to make trying to get around not actually showing the episode on camera. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Bye!